Paris, why don't you right. start off prayer tonight as we welcome the Holy Spirit? Do this. Spirit. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, let's just uh, focus on God right now. We're going to start prayer. And um, man, we just uh, I'm just so excited to feel the presence of God tonight, wherever we mm. are. God, I just thank you so much that you're with us, Lord. No matter that we're gathering in this way, God, but that you meet mm. every single one of us where we're at, God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no boundary that you cannot break down. There is no, th no thing that puts itself above you that you cannot tear down. So right now, Lord, we just stand against chaos. Lord, we stand against any pride or anxiety. Lord, we take it down now in the name of Jesus Christ. We just lift up love, joy, and peace, God. Yes, I just Lord. thank you that your peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds, God, that you just come into every living room represented here, every bedroom, Lord. You come, your mighty peace, just come into our hearts, God. Come into our minds, Lord. Bring your peace, your wisdom, and your guidance. Holy Spirit, yes, we lean on you. We trust in you, God. We rely on the rock of ages, that there is, we cannot be moved because we stand on the rock of Jesus. There is nothing that can move us. There is nothing that can come against us because we stand with Jesus in our hearts. So God, I thank you for every authority that you've given us, every authority over death and destruction and disease, God. And we stand against it now in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift you up, God. We pray that your name becomes famous, Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus, just famous throughout the world, Lord, for good, for peace, for justice, Lord. So God, I just thank you for what you are doing in every bedroom, in every living room right now. I thank you, that Holy Spirit, that you are moving mightily, mightily, Lord, that you can change any situation, God. You can come into any situation and change it for your glory, for your good. So God, we trust in you. We come to you. We lay our burdens on you God in Jesus name thank you God thank you God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Father Lord thank you because we get to do church Lord God uh, Lord, we thank you because we get to come together as one Lord Jesus thank you Lord for the gifts of community Lord Father Lord we go against every spirit of isolation every stronghold of depression Lord in the sea Lord Father Lord we come against them in the name of Jesus Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, I'm praying for men today, Lord, that every personal battle, Lord, that the men are fighting, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, we proclaim, Lord, that the battle is yours, Lord. Father, Lord, we proclaim that the battle is yours and won in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that in the hearts of men, in your hidden man, Lord, that your spirit is going to rise up in the man, Lord God, and they're going to get a sense of revival in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that men will know that they can rely on you, Lord Jesus. They know that even in the spirit, Lord, that you have dreams and vision for their lives in the name of Jesus, that they shall know that it can be accountable to other men in the season, Lord, that every vice is Lord shall be diminished in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we are praying, Lord, for redemption for all men in our church, Lord. We are praying for your redemption in their lives. We are praying for your redemption in their affairs. We are praying for your redemption, oh God, even in your relationships, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray, oh God, that the new things they are, Lord, shall be aligned with your path, that shall be aligned with your dreams, and shall be aligned with your plans for their lives in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because this period, this period will be, we are going to raise warriors, oh God. We are going to yearn after your love. We are going to yearn after your mercy. We are going to yearn after your grace, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, God. You are so good. You are holy. You are worthy, God. We exalt you above all things. We exalt you in this place, God. We lift you up, God. No matter where our location is, God, you are exalted. You sit as king above the earth, oh God. And Lord, we give this day to you, God. It is yours, God. Everything that feels out of control, God, we give over to you, God. We lay every burden of our heart down, oh God, at your feet, God. We commit it into your hands, God. Lord, we, because you are sovereign, Lord, we thank you, God. We know you're in control, God. I thank you for the salvation. I thank you for the Holy Spirit move around the earth, God. I thank you that, Lord, that you're moving, God, that, you're not dead, that we have a hope in you, Jesus. I thank you, God, that there is no other God by which men can be saved, so our hope is in you, God. We are not without hope, so we hold on to you, God. You are the rock that is higher than we are, God. So we hold on to you in times of despair, God. I come against depression, anxiety, oh God. I pray that we would find our strength in you, God, that you would ground us, oh God, in this season, God, that we would find rhema, logos, God, new word, God, in your word. God, I thank you, oh God. I pray over the pastors, oh God. I pray for vision over the church, your body, oh God, in the in the entire world, God, that new word would go forth, oh God, that the church would rise up 
in times of trouble, that people would turn to you, God, that you would find solace and peace in you, that you are the answer. God. So God, I give you praise, we give you glory, God, because we don't need to be afraid of what to come, because you're the one who holds our future, God. So God, I just give you praise, I give you glory, Lord, we honor you today, we lift you up, we praise you, we exalt you, we magnify you above every situation, above every unknown circumstance, God, we give you the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you because you're such a good God. We thank you because you are a strong and mighty warrior, God. We thank you that you are fighting on our behalf, God. Thank you, God, that you are fighting on behalf of your people, God. And even though people feel that they might not see it, God, we thank you that you are such a good God. Heavenly Father, we just raise your name in this place, God. We say thank you because you are such a good God. We praise you, Holy Spirit, God. You are a strong God and you are fighting on behalf of your people, God. So we thank you for who you are, God. We praise your name because you are mighty, God. We thank you that there is no situation that you are not above. Thank you, God, because there is no, there is no situation that people are trying to navigate that you, God, cannot give wisdom for. God, we thank you, God, because you give wisdom. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name, God. You are so good, God. We just thank you, God. We thank you, God, that people are walking out of this season, God, with a deeper relationship with you, God. We thank you, God, that people are walking out of this season, God, feeling protected by you, God. Heavenly Father, we speak against anything that's trying to cause doubt and fear in people's lives. We say, God, you are stronger than that. You are stronger than any, any thought that sit, tries to exalt itself, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, because you have the final say in people's lives, God. God, we speak over people's lives that whatever they lost, God, we thank you, God, because you are replacing that. You are replacing a double fold, God. I thank you for testimonies, God. I thank you for favor, God. I just Bless your name because there are testimonies coming out of this season, God. We thank you because even when we can't see it, God, you are fighting on our behalf, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, God, that you are a healer, God. We speak healing over anyone who feels right now that there is any sickness in their body, God. We pray, God that you will fill them right now, God. We speak healing over their lives, God. We speak healing over their lives, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, everyone in your living rooms, in your kitchens, wherever you at, why don't, why don't we just focus on God and welcome his Holy Spirit in. So, Father, I thank you that you aren't limited to a specific atmosphere or a specific place, God, but you can come right here, right now, into every single room, every single household, every single area where people are at. Father, we fix our eyes on you, and, and by faith, we draw on you, God, and we ask for more of your Holy Spirit's presence in our world. We ask for more of your Holy Spirit's presence in our lives, God. We ask that you would just fill us to the fullest measure of Christ, God, that we wouldn't be lacking anything in you, God, that we wouldn't be lacking uh, a single thing in your presence, God, that we would find healing, we would find hope, we would find answers, oh God. God, because in you, we find everything that we need. In you, we, we are found all sufficient. So God, we just lift up this all in night to you, God. We give you glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Yeah, give God some praise. Give him a little praise party in your living rooms. So good. I love seeing the active, it needs to be active praise over Zoom, okay? Because I can't hear you uh, screaming and shouting. So good to be together uh, tonight. I love All In Night, and it ain't no different over Zoom. I love it just the same. I'm so excited. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff going. Church has obviously transitioned and shifted gears a little bit, so we're going to spend a bit of time just getting everybody in the know of what's happening so that we can keep engaged, we can keep in the know, and we can know what's happening. There's some links coming up in the chat, so watch the chat if you need to, and if you're brand new, click that connect card. We'd love to get to know you. But first and foremost, I just want to celebrate a true story 
my goodness, it was so incredible, blown away. Uh, I tears in my eyes 13 times on a Sunday morning or Sunday morning, afternoon, legit tears. It was powerful. But here's the deal is the impact of a true story has not ended. The link just came up in the chat. It is live on YouTube. Think about who you can be sharing that to right now. I've already shared it with like all my coworkers, any of my family members who missed out, I've shared it to them. And I would encourage you do the same. You probably watched it and thought, man, I wish this person saw this. Well, click that YouTube link and send it their way. It's, it's gonna be so impactful in their world, I know it. I'm so thankful for our creative team. Are you? Give them a massive hand for using their gifts to advance the kingdom of God. So good. Hey, well, I hear that Pastor Jojo has, has the lowdown of what's coming up this Sunday. Hey, Pastor Jojo. So many exciting things going on. Love that celebration of a true story. Can you guys feel the momentum of building a church? It's absolutely incredible. Oh my goodness. Building our online experiences. This Honestly. Sunday, we're going back to six in the six. So our service times are going to be nine, 10, 11, three and 4 p.m. And then 8 p.m. for the last service. Uh, so be sure to log in and be there uh, this Sunday. But like Pastor Greg said, these six, six services, six opportunities to invite friends in. Uh, so this week's service is going to be absolutely incredible. And so you can invite friends in for that. And the cool thing about this Sunday specifically is we are launching Next Steps at noon. What? So that's right. Our Next Steps experience is coming online. Yeah. What? Pastor Jerry is just so excited. You should be excited. And so this is going to give an opportunity uh, for us as campus pastors and hosts to be able to give people that warm welcome that they've experienced uh, on a Sunday. And so we're really looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, posted on the website. So let's click a link. And they'll be in a Zoom call just like this. Be able to Love see their faces and connect a little deeper. I just also want to shout out uh, this, the IGTV content. Uh, oh Pastor Greg, did you check out that uh, interview with Pastor Sam and Pastor John Heinrichs? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Men, if you did not tune in to that interview, uh, Pastor Sam interviewed Pastor John Heinrichs. And whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you got kids, whether you don't have kids, there was so much gold for wherever you're at. And I was so blessed by it. And I believe that this is going to help so many men in our church. That is right. You're going to want to uh, check that out. You're going to want to uh, log in and watch that. There's a lot of incredible content on IGTV. Um, you should also look out for Pastor Sam and Jess live at home. Uh, they did their first IGTV live segment and it was incredible. It was live and unfiltered. Pastor Sam was doing uh, chin ups. It was incredible. Uh, they were, you know, the kids were in there and it's just such a great opportunity uh, to be able to ask some questions as well and connect with them deeper. Um, so be sure to look out for that as well as on IGTV. If you've missed any of our Thrones devotionals um, or any of the on the line chats, be sure to check that out. It's all on Instagram. Follow us at, at cfutrano.com. Before I pass things over to Sarah Sam, I just wanted to take a quick moment to celebrate an incredible couple in our church who unfortunately are moving uh, to Kelowna. So Dane and Mira um, have been a part of our church for several years. We love them so, so much. Um, I wish Pastor Marilyn was here. She's at the hospital and, and she would uh, echo the same thing. We just appreciate you guys so much. Uh, Mira was our point person for hosting at North Campus and Dane was one of our fierce captains on the muscle team. Um, just such an incredible couple. I'm getting a little bit shaky even just talking about it because they mean so much to us, but um, just their sense of hospitality. Right. Uh, our first North Campus event was actually hosted in their backyard. So the right. We love you guys, Dane and Mira. <laughs> I just had to interrupt. <laughs> I'm not meant to be talking now, but Dane and Mira, you're awesome. Love you. Love you guys. I see those hearts, you beautiful people. Sorry, Jojo, keep going. No, yeah, so that, that interest barbecue is in their backyard and they just have such a sense of hospitality and you would have seen their our story recently um, during our online experience, but just an incredible story of how God has shown up in their lives and how they've just responded by creating space for others. Um, we just love you guys so much and we know that you have such a passion for building a church and so what is our loss is a gain to Kelowna. Uh, BC is gonna go to the next level because they're receiving legends like you guys. So we love you guys, we're gonna miss you, and we just appreciate you so much. 
I'm just going to pass it over to uh, Sarah Sam. I think you're on mute, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, you're on mute. Telling us, telling, I'm getting the vibe. Hello. On <laughs> Awesome. Amazing. Well, last Sunday, this past Sunday, we launched our virtual food bank. So, so excited for this and this initiative that we're doing as a church. We saw a need within our community. We saw needs rising here within Toronto, um, but we knew that there was a way to support the Daily Bread Food Bank and wanted to make a safe space for us to do that. Um, and so that's where this initiative came from. And just in the past five days alone, we've seen $17,000, $17,000 worth of food donated to the Daily Bread Food Bank. And that's gonna get in the hands of those who most need it within our city. So I um, just love that. Just wanted to um, show everyone out and say thank you so much for just um, being so generous. I'm so proud to be part of such a generous church. <laughs> And on that note of generosity, we've actually had a lot of people reaching out to the church, um, being generous with their time and wanting to find ways to um, get involved and continue to serve throughout this time, uh, even from home. So um, there's many ways to do that, but one of them is our admin team. So if you're admin minded or love systems or have some time uh, right now, then I encourage you to click the poll uh, below. We're actually going to be ramping up our admin Alvanto database cleanup uh, right now and using this time for that. Um, so make sure you click that poll and uh, one of our team members will be able to get in touch with you. Um, but just awesome that we can continue to serve the church um, even virtually um, and from our homes throughout this time. So incredible. Incredible. Looking forward to serving with you all. So good. I love that God's still building his church while online. It's incredible. Um, another great thing that we got going on, I love seeing all the posts and all the Instagrams about the Zoom team nights that have been happening. They've been incredible. They've been such a joy. And this isn't just another connection point, but what this is, is when we join team, we join family. And so the Zoom team nights, the team chats, they're like sitting down at the family dinner table, sitting down in the living room, sharing vision, sharing some exciting stuff that's going on in life, talking about purpose and having a good laugh. Like, I don't know about you, but I love to have a good laugh, crack a few jokes and enjoy some time with my team and with my family. So if you're not on one of those team calls yet, then make sure the schedule for the team calls is coming up on the link on the side there on the chat. So check out your next one. And I just want to celebrate our kids team had their biggest team hang yet and it was done digitally. So shout out to the kids team. Give them a huge hand. They're incredible. I love that we're a family church and not just uh, adults. We welcome our families and our kids. So thank you, kids team. Hey, one more thing I just want to talk about is we've kicked it off tonight with digital all in. Woo, woo, woo. And we're having a blast. We're going to continue this. <laughs> I tend to say awkward things on mic. I do it on Zoom too. Don't worry. You're here to have a good laugh. Uh, but we're going to continue the rhythm monthly. So the first Thursday of every month, make sure to jump online for all in and it's going to be a blast we love to have fun so on that note i'm going to hand it over to chrissy burrow woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Lol. Um, amazing well guys speaking about having fun i just want to welcome my co-host to the screen mark bone where are you chrissy, where chrissy. Are you? hello hey sorry oh, Zoom I'm is so, not convenient i am so I glad that you could do that my apologies, uh, but I'm here. Uh, I'm getting long, luscious hair because I've been in quarantine. So, Sorry. yeah, it's unfortunate that you don't have a hairdresser nearby to help yeah. you out with that. I, I uh, people are doing the hand sanitizer, but if I leave the apartment, I just do full body shower. Just, <laughs> there's no no way of being too safe. Amazing. So, Mark, uh, we're just going to get our trusty assistant to help us out because we're going to play a little game called True Story Trivia. Love do, it. Do, do. We don't, we don't have any music, so we'll just have to make it up ourselves. Uh, so, if you have your phone with you right now, in a second, okay, you want to get your camera out and scan that QR code or go to, I mean, slido.com. 
I promise it's a legit website. Bernie Sanders <laughs> and, uh, is back. Yes. <laughs> and then type in hashtag all in if you're joining by that. Um, and Michelle Barker, James Rate, Karis Rate, you guys are not allowed to play this game because you know too much. Not too much. Oh, it's come on. Well, you know. Wow, look uh, at that populated. Wow. Okay, so we're, this is a game to test how many of you actually watched a true story on the weekend and mark what is our prize we have a we have a great prize oh we have a yummy prize we want to help you not have to cook another meal for yourself we have a 30 dollar uber eats gift card so it's going to help you get those yummies to your belly those yummies it's yeah it's going to be great so you guys are all joining look at them all Look at all wow. these people, shivers. Amazing. Shivers, that's a lot of people. So Mark, what was your favorite part about the film on the weekend? Um, what was my favorite? My favorite part was just so many friends of mine who don't normally get to go to church or don't normally go to church reaching out and saying like they loved it and were really impressed by it. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I had one friend of mine who, who doesn't go to church often text me, it was effing awesome. So I take that as a good review. So <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's great. Donald Trump is here. Okay, we are starting. Okay, you ready? Uh, our trusty assistant, we're starting in three, two, oh, what color was Detective Cosman's tie? Was it blue, red, black, or green? Ooh. You can't go watch the trailer right now. You have to do this. So, yeah, Mark, don't give them chi like chips. Chips on treating. Chips. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Pastan's really thinking about this. He's got his thinking face on. <laughs> Okay, oh, this is the people have voted. 52% say blue. What is the correct answer? Give it to us. Red, oh, wow. Well, I guess past time lost because it's a losing, <laughs> a losing fist pump. <laughs> uh, next question. Okay. All right, Mark. I got this. What line did the detective rewind Peter, AKA Matt Don, to saying at the end of the film? Was it, he died to save us? He died to save me. He died and rose again, or he died to save you. I mean, all of those things are true. They, they're all very true. <laughs> There's only one correct answer. There is only one correct answer. Let's see the results. Ooh, he Ooh. died to save us. And what is the correct answer, Mr. Computer? Oh, look, at most of you got that right. Yes. Well done. That's good. Salvation That's for good. everyone. I love yeah. it. Yeah, that's what you win. <laughs> uh, what's the next <laughs> question? I'll send you a salvation gift card in the mail. Chrissy, you All right, got who, who said the line, he's an exceptional man? Was it Thomas the disciple, which was Wally, Peter the disciple, which is Matt, Mary, Jesus' mother, Lucy Don, or Mary Magdalene, uh, Michelle? Who said it? Not who, who thought it? it, who said it? He's an exceptional man. What did people, oh, yeah, that was a great, uh, oh, yeah, Lucy Don gets the That's majority vote. Right? Okay, let's I'm see what the back. correct answer is. Lucy Don, and she does actually think that about her own son, not just Jesus, so True. well done, Lucy. Uh, next question. Okay, what did Detective Cosman heat up in the microwave at the beginning of the film? Was it a bagel, a coffee mug, a heating pack or popcorn because it was a movie. Mm, I could go one of those right now. I could. I could go for a heating pack. All these. Mm, I could also go for popcorn. That tastes good. What was it? A bagel. A Who bagel. heats up a bagel, <laughs> by the way? Um, most people heat up a bagel. Oh, uh, what's great. the correct answer? A mug of coffee. Uh, a mug of coffee. Correct. Great. He's correct. All right, next question. What term did Detective Otto, which is Marissa, use to describe Jesus followers? The Jesus pack, Jesus fans, zealots, or Jesus freaks? Mark, sing the song, Jesus freaks. Don't want I was in, 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 Jesus freaks. Does anyone remember that? DC talk? Yeah. I think that's the right song. It's just Michelle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that was great. Okay. Oh, it's a bit of a divided one. Jesus yeah, freaks. Interesting. What, what's the correct Jesus answer? Pack, by the way, Jesus pack, the starter pack. Jesus freaks. Yes. Jesus yes. freaks. Yep. 23%. All right, Mark, next one. Okay. Oh, pass the what type of that. stone did the stonemason, Bryce Stewart, say was crafted from Jesus for Jesus' tomb? Was it a bottle stone, a wine bottle stone, a plug-shaped stone, mm -hmm. a stopper stone, or a cork-shaped stone? 
interesting. He Stone, knew stones. He, he knows stones, that guy. He knew stones. Yeah. He, okay. He's also from Brooklyn. Cork shaped yeah. stone. <laughs> people think a cork shaped stone. Interesting. Okay. What's the correct answer? It was a cork shaped stone. It was a cork shaped stone. I mean, people, that was a fan favorite, that scene. Yeah, fan that was. People loved it. Next question. What time does the alarm clock show when it goes off in the beginning of the film? 6 a.m., 6.30, 5, or 5.30? Ooh, well, I mean, if he was getting up to serve at West Campus. I know. The, the, 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 <a. m. laughs> All 5 those 30. times apply to West Campus. day, I see that. Earlier for Matt Simmons, because he's holy. What is it? 6 a.m. 6 a.m., correct answer is? All the muscle team guys did 5.30, I bet. There it is, 6 a.m. <laughs> All right, Mark, you got the next one. Okay, next question. What was Joseph of Arimathea, Jay's great, occupation listed as in the police footage? Was it MPP, councilman, congressman, or mayor? MVP MP, or Member MP? of provincial Ooh. parliament. Pro provincial? Provincial <laughs> parliament. Provincial parliament. Uh, What's the right answer, Chrissy? <laughs> Okay, people say congressman. What was it? Oh, wow. They got that right. That's amazing. Good job. I got yeah. that wrong. Today you did, you did get that wrong and he tests. Yeah. yeah and I, I edited. Next, next question. You got two more to go. This is the money round. There's no money. Uh, what did the centurion, Karis Ray, claim speeds up the crucifixion process? Wine, breaking their legs, starving them, or singing to them? I guess that depends who's singing. If it was Mark Bone, then that's Yeah, if it's my singing, people are dying. Definitely <laughs> speeds up that process. Yeah. Uh, and the correct, what did people say? Breaking, Breaking their legs. Right. And the correct answer was? Well done. Well done, team. This is the final round, final question. Also, speed counts as well. So you have to be quick on this. Come All on, right, Bernie last Sanders. question, Mark. You got it. What did Pilate have written as the notice of Jesus's crime? Was it Jesus of Nazareth, claim King of the Jews? Was it King of the Jews, tax evader, or YOLO? Oh my goodness, this could be any of them. Sweaty Landon, this is Sweaty Landon's scene. It should be YOLO JK. <laughs> <laughs> Came back. Ooh, Ooh, King of the Jews. King of the Jews and... What's the answer? Yes. Yeah. Let's see the final poll. Let's see who's the winner. Winner, winner. Brian. Brian. Is this wait, which Brian is this? How do we know? It's Brian. Is it? But yeah, but this could be more than one Brian. Is this Brian Mahalo? No, Brian. Talk to us, someone. It is. It is. It's me. It's no. It's hey. not. Yes, it is. is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then you win. I, I don't know about this co cohorts with um with yeah, that, money. That, I don't know how fair that is. Uh, <laughs> I who's, not who's, say a word. I who's, swear. Who's M and M? That's awesome. Who's He's the runner up? A lot. Who, who's M and M? Someone write in the Slack. That's so good, Mark. Yolo. Just kidding. That just made my night. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> So. Um, speaking of making our night, let's welcome Pastor Sam to the to the Zoom call. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is incredible. This is this is so good. Hey, um, say hi to everybody. Oh uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Jess was gonna win. She was getting them all right. I got the tie wrong though. That was that was everyone's <laughs> that was everyone's sample. But hey, yeah. I. I, th I want to just say, uh, in regards to connect groups, um, it, it's amazing to see what's going on online right now. Just the engagement of the team hangs, connect groups and everything has been just extraordinary. And we're just so proud of everybody that's yeah. watching this. Because here's the thing is the impact of the church has changed in the way, uh, the impact of the church is the same, like what, what is going on, but it's dramatically increased. Right. And we have, uh, we have a just we have to pivot like in everything and so what we're going to do for connect groups is we're going to keep the connect groups going for two extra weeks in the month of may just to maintain people's connection because i don't know if you actually would believe this but it's only been one month that we've been in quarantine i know it feels like it's been half our freaking lives 
But uh, so what that means is what would normally be a month break would just feel like an eternity for everybody. So as connect groups, we're going to keep them going till the middle of May, May long weekend. Then we're going to have a two week break and then we're going to re-sign up for the summer groups. And my, like our request just in regards to vision is that you opt in as much as possible. Um, there isn't a whole lot of other things going on in church, but I know there's a whole lot of other things going on in your lives. All I ask is that you prioritize church above everything else. <laughs> I just, I, well, joke, joking, but seriously. No yeah. Asked, <laughs> so, uh, so, but just, there are so many things right now that are just time leeches and they suck, they suck away so much time. And so we have to get into good rhythms of making sure that we are in control of the priorities. So there are so many people out there that need the connection that we offer, which is not just normal, not just normal connection. It is, uh, it is pointing people to Jesus in the presence of God, the spirit of faith and all that. And people can sign up for connect groups and they need to, and you're going to help in that process. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So then in June, we'll be um, kicking things back in and we'll, we're going to keep playing it as it comes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach to the people. Go for it. I, mean, I love you. Do that, so. I'm not used to preaching with um, Jess right there, although that would be nice. Would but be she's nice. going to tune in. Oh, my other laptop. Um, so it's all awesome. Well, get your Bibles out, everybody, and uh, turn to the book of Galatians chapter 1. We are at All In, and I know it feels different, but it's still, uh, it's still amazing to have everybody make comments in the thread and everything. And here's the thing. The methods have changed a little bit, but the mission is still the same. The mission in like two words is that we proclaim Jesus. That's the truth of the mission. And we get to use Zoom, we get to use church online, we get to use anything to proclaim the name of Jesus. So the methods have adjusted a little bit. And for us, I mean, church online before this wasn't normal. I don't know if you remember, but we didn't have church online. And for our church, this, what happened through the COVID pandemic is it pushed us to actually make something happen that I know everybody is exceptionally grateful for now. And like, just to give you a little bit of an insight as to the impact and what's going on in the church, just for Easter alone, Easter weekend, last weekend, 4,989 people, different devices tune in. That's just devices. So if you assume on the average device, there could be two people average watching, that's an impact of nearly 10,000 people in attendance on Easter. What? That's, that's nuts. Um, the True Story film has now played over 4,000 times on YouTube. We had in nine worship experience times on Easter Sunday, which was amazing, by the way. Thanks for all the hosts for doing their thing. The highest attendance was the 11 a.m. service, which was one-tenth of the total Easter attendance just in one service alone. So there was, there was nearly uh, 450 devices tuned in just in that one service. So if you do the same map, that service alone could have been a single service, one of nine, with over a 1,000 people in attendance. This is what we don't regularly experience when we do church as we used to do it in January and February. So as much as there's enough craziness going on, we ought to give God a little praise break for what, for what he's doing in our church. So total salvations just since we've been online has exceeded 400 people. Highest salvations in one single week was obviously Easter weekend with 185 people in one weekend making decisions for Christ. We've never experienced that as a church. And the total people that have received prayer, direct prayer and engaged in prayer has been 206 people. And total devices since going online, total engagement has been 10,389 people. So I would say since just going online in one month, 20 to 30,000 people in attendance. Wow. I don't know if the microphone is breaking right now and technology is failing me, but I'm super excited 
about some of that stuff. And I just want to say that I understand that finances have shifted for many of us, but I, can I encourage you to really, really preempt and think about financial stability, think about budgeting, think about um, what that means for you and, and however you're working it out. And please reach out. We have people that can speak to you and help you if you need um, some sort of basic financial advice. But I've really got to encourage you to engage in giving and engage in tithing. It's so amazing what happened through the C3 Food Bank. But what's going on in our church right now, I can't thank you enough in how your part is playing a part in the kingdom. They're, like, let's face reality, some people's amounts of what they would normally automate with giving would have gone down. And we understand that. And, and you need to do that in your budgeting. And I just encourage you to remain obedient to God, though, like that, that there is always something that we can do. And you might think that what you're doing doesn't make a massive impact. Well, I just told you of the, of the gigantic impact that your giving is making. So please, if you don't already have automated giving set up, consider it, prayerfully consider it. Um, it makes a massive difference to keep the church buoyant, to keep the church fed, to keep the church moving forward. We're looking at releasing music soon. We're looking at more creativity soon. We're looking at different things and, and we wanna make sure that these things are resourced well. So, so please, thank you so much. And, uh, and, and I'm making no apologies about it from a leadership level is that we lead first and we understand that our finances are making a massive difference and always be in faith always be in faith the position of our finances positions our heart and it positions our faith and when you let that language of faith rise up on the inside of you you it's just amazing how much the holy spirit brings in economic advice even from himself and uh and can shift things in our financial world so we're praying for you we're believing for you and i thank you all uh, for continuing to give and continuing to tithe and do that so that, that does mean a lot. So here's the thing, moving forward, vision-wise, um, is we're, we're keeping church online 100%. I don't know if that's a question for anybody, but we're obviously going to do that. We're working on virtual next steps. And the way next steps is going to happen this Sunday, it will be different when we go and we meet in church permanently. Next steps will remain virtual. We'll do physical next steps at church, but we'll keep a virtual next steps team and we're going we're gonna to keep the reach of our church and the impact of this church um, expanding for sure. Also, we're working on in the, in, the, in the background what it would mean to have an online experience team on Sunday. So there'll be an entirely new team of likely hundreds of people that will just be simply rostered on and engaging online on Sunday. So we'll probably have like a room where people will be hosting on computers and online service times. So in this time through the COVID pandemic, we've essentially launched another campus, or you could probably say a thousand campuses based on where devices tune in all around the world. And so I'm pretty happy about that. And I just want to remind you that at the volleys, we talked about going public. Well, guess what? The prophecy is getting fulfilled right now. So we said in C3 Toronto, this is, this is what we wrote about going public in 2020 we're going public not because we care to seek fame and glory but because the world must know we have a heavenly mandate a commission a preordained destiny we have to focus and refocus and realign to fight again in 29 i'm just reading what i read out at the volleys in 2019 we have been developed for the next phase so in 2020 it doesn't mean that we are necessarily free from trouble but we're stronger to take on what might come at this public level you are stronger i tell you you are stronger this doesn't mean it's going to be easy and god knows it hasn't been easy it just means that we have developed endurance the endurance required and doesn't mean that it's going to be handed to us but we have never been more equipped as a team for the fight ahead. 2020, we're going public. Let's respond to our calling. Let's see the gospel of hope have its greatest impact in our city yet. Let's see the altar calls full of salvation. Let's see the wandering come home. Let's see families flourish into brand new life. Let's see 
the confused find faith. Let's see the eyes of the spiritually blind open. Let's do all that we can do so that, not, so that this isn't just a community that connects people to God, and, but this is a nation that connects people to God. This is my prayer. Let's do this. Let's go public. And I just thank you, God. I thank God that he has an agenda. And it's clear through this time that God in his providence has an agenda. And you need to understand this principle over your own life. That God is a providential God. That means that he has an agenda. He has a plan. He is the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. And whatever you're facing right now, you need to understand that you serve a sovereign God. You need to understand that you serve a providential God. You need to understand that you serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is, in fact, on the throne. So I don't know how dethroned your life feels. I don't know how dethroned your circumstance feels. I don't know how out of control your life feels right now, but in the name of Jesus, that you would understand the providence of God and the sovereignty of God, and you would understand that God's agenda, God's plan is higher, more superior, and more sovereign than our ideas and our plan, more than the coronavirus's plan. You need to understand that in God's agenda and God's sovereignty, that there are promises is being fulfilled for your life right here and right now before your eyes. And I'm so glad that you've tuned in for this online experience. I'm just preaching like I normally would on Sunday. I know it's not kosher. I know you're not supposed to do this on a Zoom call, but I dare people that are cooler than me to try and tell me how to be. All right. So Paul on the road to Damascus found that God had an agenda. Paul was doing his thing. He was walking his way. And he found out that God had an agenda. He was going about life, rocking his regular routine. And we get to read about that in Galatians chapter 1. So it says this in Galatians chapter 1, talking about referencing Acts chapter 9, where Paul had this road to Damascus experience, where his world was going one way and it was flipped all upside down. Doesn't that sound familiar right now? He says, for I heard in verse 13, uh, for you have heard uh, of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of people my own age among my people, uh, and I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But, but when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb, called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son. Somebody say reveal. Reveal his son in me. Someone say Christ in us. Christ in us, so that I might preach. So that I might preach. In Acts chapter 9, it actually says that Paul was a chosen instrument. And if you're taking notes, which I hope you are, you should write down, I am a chosen instrument. You are a pre-chosen instrument from God. God has an agenda. He had an agenda before you were born, before you were thought of in your mother's womb. He has an agenda for your life. He has a plan for your life. And you are a chosen instrument. And I like what's going on around the world right now that has given us a metaphor or a parable about what, what God could be using. See, they've taken satellite images of pollution that was like over different areas of the world in January. And then they've contrasted those same satellite images for those same areas now. And what you can see is crazy. I mean, there's people in India that are saying they are seeing the Himalayas for the first time in three decades. They, the smog, the pollution was blocking the Himalayas. I mean, these giant mountains. You know, there's photos that you can look up of Los Angeles right now, and it blows your mind how clean the air looks, how, how beautiful it is and what's revealed. The, the canals in Venice right now, you can see the bottom of the water. It's been, and here's the thing is that sometimes us just living our normal lives, our normal routine, there can be so much pollution covering what is beautiful, what is there, and, and it, takes, it takes some sort of life interruption for the pollution to clear and, and for it to reveal what was there all along. Christ is in you all along. Christ has been in you all along. And maybe sometimes there's just been this block of pollution that's gone on in your life. And we could just call that life's clutter. And in this time, 
the, the air has become clearer and it's revealing the bad and the good. I don't know about you, but sometimes marriages can get more tense when the clutter is revealed. I don't know about you, but sometimes home life can get more intense when the pollution is uh, uh, fades away. And, and that the, so what, what's going on is we, we find ourselves questioning things and it becomes very exposing. And in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be preaching about Christ in us. I'm going to be talking a little bit about this as well. Um, but I wanted to give it to you guys first because this is a leadership lesson that, that Paul had a call from God before he was born and he wasn't living it. He was killing Christians that he would eventually change his purpose where he, wanted, where he would end up dying for the people that he, would, that he was originally persecuting. So Paul was living his purpose, or well, he thought it was his purpose, but it took this moment of revelation, realizing what was the calling that he was set apart for that was chosen in him all along. It took a moment of crisis. It took a COVID pandemic to shift something, to break something, to, to get us to wake up to a moment. And some of us, I don't know what you're wrestling with. So point one is own the wrestle. Point one is own, I'm going to own my wrestle. What are you wrestling with right now? Own your wrestle. In these extreme circumstances, we get slapped in the face. And, and we talked about this just at the last all in. The prophetic word was, see, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? That was at the last all in. And sometimes when God does a new thing, it's not the thing that we, it's not the expected thing. And so, so in our lives, some of us are wrestling with loneliness. Some of us are wrestling with fears. You thought you were a person of major faith, but then COVID happened. And then all of a sudden your tail's between your legs. You're freaking out. You're running around the house. You're yelling at everybody. And it's revealing. The pollution's gone and it's exposing. Some of us have, uh, wrestling with tension in the home, self-control. We thought we had more self-control, but then you're home and isolated all the time and then self-control out the window. Oh my gosh, the pollution's gone. This thing of, I actually don't have self-control now. It's revealed in my life. Schedule change, feeling overwhelmed, the clutter of sin. I didn't realize there was so much sin present. I didn't realize there was so much darkness present. Now the pollution's gone. Now the clutter of life is gone and this thing surfaces. And so, we're wrestling and even some of us might even be wrestling as leaders and as team with the thought of, man, how Christian am I really? How much did I really just rely on Sunday service? Like how, how deep is the well of my faith? And, and we're confronted with this thing of, oh my gosh, like I'm, 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 and what I'm encouraging you to do is not try and suppress the thing that you're wrestling with, I'm trying to encourage you to own the wrestle. I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to let it become a suddenly moment. Like Paul on the road, he, he was faced with a suddenly, and that suddenly he thought that he was blind, but God blinded Paul to open his eyes. God blinded Paul to open his eyes. So in this wrestle, so Paul says, Paul says this in Galatians. He says, he says, I, uh, he talks about the traditions of his fathers. I was extreme. He says, I was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Yet what he didn't realize is God wanted, God had an agenda to change all the traditions. And so there are some things that have traditionally been a part of your identity that God is shifting right now. There are some things that have traditionally made you struggle. God is breaking it right now. There are some things that have traditionally that you've lived with for too long. God is shifting it right now. He's breaking it. He's, he's doing it. And so number one is own the wrestle. Number two, and I only have two points, let Jesus reveal himself in you. Let Jesus reveal himself in the wrestle. So when you're wrestling with something, you're looking for where is Jesus in this? And in Galatians, it says, he called me by grace and he was pleased. This is Galatians, sorry, 1 verse 15 and 16. We just read it. He called me by grace and he was pleased to reveal his son in me, not to me, inside me. He was pleased to reveal what was there all along. And I know for me, I just found myself talking to someone about a week ago and I could hear the soundtrack of my language and it was a soundtrack of fear. And then... 
and 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 Paul would have been wrestling just like everybody else. I mean, the wrestle there was is that Jesus was chosen people was only the Jews. And then the rest of the tradition changed where when God was only the God of the Jews, God became the God of anyone who receives him through faith. All the Jews were wrestling with this tradition. Paul was wrestling with this tradition. Everybody around him was wrestling with this tradition and God had an agenda. And there have been so many things traditionally that we've kept in our churches that we've practiced week in and week out just on Sundays that we could try and hold on to these traditions, but I bet God has a bigger agenda. And that's what's going on in the world right now. He's, he's breaking the traditions. He's breaking the status quo. He's breaking what pastors thought we should do week in and week out on Sundays. And if we keep trying to hold on to tradition, we're going to miss out what Jesus is doing in faith to reach a people group far beyond the people that know Jesus right now. I tell you what, that now is the day from the four corners of the world where everybody can tune in at one time. Like when, when Jesus says every knee will hear at the same time and God can appear to everybody at the same time. Do you know all we can be connected all around the world through a device at the exact same time right now. So we are in the last days and I found the soundtrack of my, of my speech was like, well, how long is this going to last? Like when, when, and I was talking to someone and I was sounding all mopey and complaining and like, whoa, whoa is me, COVID-19. And I was, I was just being this like annoying, naggy tone. And, and then I found this wrestle in me that was like, why do I sound like this? Surely this isn't what Christ wants me to sound like. And then Jesus revealed himself in me as powerful, seated on the throne. The picture of my all-powerful God. And he says, Sam, do you know that I live in you? My power lives in you. My authority lives in you. And my sovereignty lives in you. And I'm not threatened by the COVID pandemic. And then I just found something in me, changing me, where I understood that I was out of my mouth was coming powerlessness. But in my spirit, he was trying to reveal how powerful I was. And so when we understand um, when we understand who we are, it says this, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb, set apart means to be, it, it means to be set apart means to be sacred. It means this is the Christian faith. This is people with Jesus. It means to be li literally to be set apart, to be different and not to be subject to. Do you know that you're not subject to what's going on in the world right now? Do you know that? about yourself does your does your voice know that about your world and when christ in us what he does is he reveals his power his peace and his authority and it gives us strength courage security fortitude the bible says this mystery is actually our hope of glory and god wants to make it known out to the world so here's the thing just because traditionally this has been you you, you, should, you should do a little journal entry about traditionally, what's my identity? Traditionally, who have I been? I don't know why it is when we become 18, we just hardly change. But God has an agenda and he's getting ready for, to give every single one of us on this call an upgrade in the name of Jesus. You're on your road to Damascus experience and suddenly your world has been interrupted. Suddenly in 2020, your normal has become not normal. And suddenly you ask the question. So I ask the question, where is the wrestle? You should write this down. Where is the wrestle? What is Jesus saying? How is, how is he revealing himself to me? And how is this changing me forever? Maybe one of my hosts could help out and pump that into the comments. So, so you're doing a journal entry on what's traditionally been you and you're asking these questions. Where is my wrestle? What is Jesus saying? How is he revealing himself, Christ in us? And how is this changing me forever? Hey, listen, guys, you're in for an upgrade. God has an agenda for your life. And the, the thing that you need to understand is that agenda existed before you were born, before you made a mistake before you made a wrong choice, before you sinned once, 
before anything, before you were born, before you lived, however you think you were living right, before any of those days, before any of your choices, God assigned in his sovereignty and providence, he assigned an agenda with your name on it. And so what we're doing right now in 2020 is God's using this time to reveal Christ in us to give you your road to Damascus upgrade. You are getting upgraded through this time. Don't ignore it. Embrace the wrestle. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Pay attention to Christ in you and let that fill you and change you. And oh my gosh, when we go back into church, this team is going to be totally upgraded. Let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank you for each and every person on this call. Lord God, I thank you that you clearly have an agenda, that you're a providential God. Lord, I thank you so much that in a sudden moment, you shift everything right now. And you are, we aren't victims, we're, we're victors in your name. I thank you that all your power resides in us. All your love resides in us. All the security of who Christ is resides in us. The resurrection power of Jesus is Christ in us. This is the mystery. It's the hope of glory. It's everything that is everything we were created to be. It already resides in us. So I pray in this time, Lord God, that it would be unpacked, that it would be revealed in Jesus' name, and it would cause everybody listening to me under the sound of my voice to get their Holy Spirit upgrade in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.